This is Super Yacht News with the Sysman. Hi, welcome back to the channel. Well, it seems like a long time since I did one of these videos. Had a bit of a break. We're all refreshed now, ready to go. Uh, one of the things I love about, about doing these videos is the amount of people that contact us and send us uh, photographs and videos and stuff of different vessels around the world. It seems like a vessel can go nowhere without being spotted by somebody who is a, a lover of the show or a subscriber. Um, as a great example of this, we had uh, some images sent into us from uh, Ushuaia, which is in Argentina. Anybody who's ever been to the Antarctic will know that Ushuaia is a staging area for going down to the Antarctic. And we got photographs here of Motias Octopus after she returned from her Antarctic expedition. And you can see her here in some of the photos, she's at anchor in, uh, in the bay, in Ushuaia Bay. And in some of the photos and videos, she's docked. Cause she, she went to anchor, then she docked, and now she's back at anchor. One of the photographs even shows a rainbow emanating apparently from the vessel. Um, other vessels that have been spotted lately, uh, we've got some images here, or, or an image here of Moti Yacht A. Now she was spotted on the 22nd of January, which is, and this was at 12.30 hours local time in uh, Alhamra Marina, which is in Ras Al Khaimah. Still got no flag on the stern, um, still not registered on the IMO database. So she's still got no flag state, it seems. Uh, other vessels spotted, Plan B, you can see Plan B here is in the Gold Coast. So I had quite a few people send in photographs of that vessel. This was the vessel that came in and it got on the news in Australia uh, about who owned it. And they were kind of worried that it might be owned by a Russian oligarch, which we don't think it was. Um, the, uh, the vessel turns out was actually once an Australian Navy vessel, which we told on the, on the channel here first. Another vessel that has been spotted recently is Motiot Nord. Now we haven't mentioned Nord for a while. She's been lying low in the Maldives. She's just turned up in a new location, as you can see in these photographs here. However, I'm not gonna tell you where she is right now. Uh, you'll have to come back to, for the next video for that. We're gonna do a little bit more about the yacht in the next video, but she's definitely been spotted. This was, these images are from yesterday, so. But we'll let you know. If you've been there before, you might know where it is already. But anyway, we will go into that in the next video. So we'll move on now to the main story. And this is uh, about two men, including one British subject, who have been charged with helping a Russian oligarch. This is the US Justice Department's words. Uh, helping a Russian oligarch protect and operate a $90 million yacht. Now, the yacht uh, that they're talking about here is Moti Yacht Tango. And you might you might know if you've been watching the channel since last year that Moti Yacht Tango was actually uh, seized in Palma de Mallorca in Spain. Uh, I think it was in April last year, and the vessel's been sat there ever since. She, she did move a few months ago, and the footage you can see now is when she moved from a, a shipyard where she, where she was having worked on at the time of the seizure over to another marina. Now you, you probably remember the footage that we showed at the time of the US federal agents boarding that vessel in Spain. Now the, the two men that were charged, one is a Russian citizen who also has Swiss citizenship and his name is Vladislav Osipov and he's 51 years old. And the other person, like I said, a British, uh, it says in the, in the US Justice Department, British citizen, but we're actually subjects, not citizens. And his name is Richard Masters, 52 years old. Now the British man Masters, he, he owns a, a yacht management company called Master Yachts, which is based in Palma de Mallorca. And um, the Justice Department said he allegedly took over the management of Motor Yacht Tango and he allegedly changed the yacht's name on paper to Moti Yacht Fanta to help avoid sanctions restrictions from banks. Now, if you're British, you'll know, already know the connection between the two names, but we'll get into that in a minute. Um, so Masters was arrested in Spain. Uh, Ozipov, the, the Russian, he's still at large, uh, but Masters was arrested. The British subject was arrested by, um, after a request by the US authorities. And now the US uh, is looking to extradite him to the US to face those charges. Now the ultimate beneficial owner of Motiot Tango is alleged to be Victor Vexelberg. This is according to the US Department of Justice again, and he was sanctioned in 2018. 
Now, both of the men allegedly used shell companies to allow Vexelberg's ownership of this yacht. Uh, the US sanctions forbid American companies such as banks to do any business with people who have been sanctioned. Now, in addition, Ozipov and Masters had yacht employees continue to do business with yacht company with US companies and used a series of workarounds to do, to avoid detection, including using shell companies to conceal the ownership of the yacht, payments uh, in other currencies and through third parties, the federal prosecutors in the US said. Now, um, Ozipov seems to have been involved in setting up shell companies in order to hide the ownership of the yacht whereas Masters seems to be involved more in the day-to-day -day running of the vessel. Um, and what, one of the things the US Department of Justice said is that it says as a result of these schemes, the working mechanisms of Tango to include its internet, technology, weather forecasting and computing systems, as well as Tango, the trappings of Tango, including satellite television, luxury goods and teleconferencing software were all US origin products services supplied by US companies to the benefit of Vexelberg. That's from the US Department of Justice. Now, one of the interesting things is, is that all of, those, all of those things, the internet services, satellite television services, they can all be supplied by companies outside of the US. And one of the, uh, one of the satellite internet companies is actually based in Palma de Mallorca, which many of the yacht management companies will have partnerships with technology companies. So one favor, one company, you know, one, one management company will favor this particular satellite uh, internet company, and they will push that out to all of the yachts that they manage. And they won't generally work with different companies. Um, they have their favorites, business uh, cooperation, whatever you want to call it. Like I said, the, the name of the yacht was changed from Tango to Fanta on paper. Now, why any, like I said, any anyone from the UK will already know the, the, the connections here. Now, uh, Tango is a carbonated orange drink that's sold in the UK. I believe it's only sold in the UK. Maybe it's sold in other countries, but I know it's definitely uh, very popular in the UK. And Fanta is obviously owned by the Coca-Cola company and it's sold all over the world. And they're both orange drinks, right? So the name was changed to Fanta. It probably thought that was quite funny. It's not a very well concealed change of name, is it? Having said that, there are vessels out there actually called Fanta, which is quite interesting. Now, one of the things I wanted to talk about is the legal exposure for the crew. Now, we have a lot of supporters in the industry that watch the channel and, and send us information about different vessels, movements, all of the stuff that we mentioned before, photographs, etc. But we also have some criticisms or some people who criticize the channel too. Now, one particular person who's contacted us on numerous occasions, whose name is unknown to us, but we suspect we know who he is. We're going to call him Captain Jack for the sake of this video. He has sent in a lot of criticisms directed towards us, and he has a couple of things just to set the scene, but stay with us because this is going back to that story. Uh, one of the things he says is, why is there no reporting on the number of crew that have, through no fault of their own, these are the crew that work on sanctioned vessels, lost their jobs as a direct result of the sanctions placed against their owners. And then he said the US Department for Transport, I'm sorry, the UK Department for Transport has confirmed to Nautilus International, that's a, a union for seafarers, that the seafarers are not within the scope of the sanctions regulations that the UK government is applying to Russian sanctions, uh, Russian super yachts. So uh, first of all, he criticized us for not reporting on the crew affected. Now we have reported on that, so he's actually incorrect. Uh, the video Ghost Boat, I'll put a link up here. At the end of that video, we talk about how many crew have been affected by sanctions since the uh, invasion of Ukraine. We mentioned it, and we've also mentioned it in various news videos. Uh, the other thing about, the, he said that uh, the crew are not the target for the UK sanctions. Now, some of the examples of the way Motiot Tango broke sanctions laws are involving the crew, and that's why I brought that up. Uh, one example is on November 16th, 2018, Tango employee A, they've referred to it in the indictment, which is most likely, we believe, the captain because he instructed other Tango staff and crew to use the term Fanta for invoices related to Tango 
and to avoid the mention of Tango. That is a quote from correspondence. Now, we, we believe that's the captain or the chief engineer, most likely, because who else instructs other members of staff and crew to do things? It's the captain or chief engineer, most likely the captain. Um, on uh, September 27, 2019, Tango employee A emailed Osipov, who was the person who was alleged to have been uh, hiding the, the ownership of the vessel. He, and he also ta emailed Tango employee B, um, who was another crew member on the vessel and a co-conspirator two employee that is a uh, co-conspirator two is master yacht the yacht management company he emailed them to describe discussions uh, he had about how to circumvent sanctioned person one that's victor vexelberg from having his name on tango's letter of authority so so he was emailing everyone concerned to talk about how he was concealing the ownership how does that affect the legal the legal aspects of this towards the, those crew members now they may not be the target of sanctions but this vessel has been seized under forfeiture laws because of illegally working under uh, because of sanctions illegally working with companies in the US and and these people allegedly are, were directly involved in circumventing those sanctions now that puts them at legal jeopardy does it not now, the reason why I bring this up is because there are lots of people who work on yachts that have been sanctioned and there are people who contact us and say, I'm going to this boat, is it sanctioned? Uh, should I go? Uh, we don't know who the management company is, things like that. Um, what I would say to those people is just because you are uh, not the target of sanctions just for working there, you can easily get pulled into something like this. I'll give you an example. If you are, say, second officer on the bridge or you're a second engineer and your captain t instructs you to not use the name of the vessel on paperwork but to put another name, what are you going to do? Are you going to say no or are you going to say, and risk, because that's risking your job, right? That you're going to say, I can't do that because it's illegal. You're not going to do that. You're going to say, okay. And you think, well, it's not a problem, right? But the US Department of Justice managed to get hold of this correspondence. So, you are potentially opening yourself up for legal jeopardy. So that's a decision that you have to make when you take a job on a yacht that is under sanctions uh, because of a current war in Europe. Uh, one last thing, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Remember to check the Patreon page at patreon.com slash You'll get to see exclusive videos not published on YouTube. You will get early access to features advert free and you will get to suggest topics for future videos and ask questions for upcoming Q&As. All right, if you've got any information uh, for, about anything we've mentioned in this video or anything else, please be sure to get in touch with the normal way. You can get us on the About page of the YouTube channel. You can get us on Instagram, on Facebook Messenger. You can also get us on Threema. Code up for Threema is below. Uh, be sure to like this video, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for future notifications. All right, guys, thanks very much for watching. I'll catch up with you soon. Bye bye.